Glasscast is a unique epoxy resin designed to produce a beautiful, hard-wearing and UV-stable clear coating for floors, bar tops, woodwork projects and more. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to use Glasscast to create a stunning, glossy penny floor, including preparing the floor, working out how much resin you'll need and the correct procedure for mixing and pouring the resin to ensure you get the unmistakable glass cast results. Let's start by running through the main things you'll need for this project. First up for a penny floor is pennies, lots of them. The number you'll need will depend on the size of your coins. The coin calculator on the glass cast product page can work this out for you. You'll also need a sealant gun loaded with a high quality DIY adhesive to stick the pennies down and we recommend grouting your pennies so you'll need black grout and a squeegee. The glass cast resin of course, we'll show you how to work out how much you'll need shortly. And the correct mixing buckets are essential, you'll need two of them, we'll explain this properly later in the tutorial. When mixing the resin you'll need a good mixing stick, basic safety gear and a spreader. Glass cast self levels allowing it to produce the totally flat glass like appearance but this does mean that your floor must be perfectly flat before you begin, if you're unsure check with the spirit level. The resin itself will do a great job of bonding the pennies to the floor, so you only need a thin bead of DIY adhesive to hold them in place. The one we're using here starts off white, so you can see where you've put it, but then cures clear, which is ideal. Although sticking the pennies down is straightforward, it takes a long time. Depending on the size of your floor, we recommend using strong alcohol on friends or family when persuading them to help. Once you've got all your pennies stuck down, we suggest grouting the floor. We'll do this with a rubber squeegee and a ready mix black tile grout. Grouting around the pennies does a few things. Firstly, it seals the floor, ensuring that resin can't leak down through any gaps. Secondly, it gives a great looking dark contrast around the pennies. And finally, it creates a flatter surface to pour the resin onto, which results in a smoother, flatter finish of the cured floor. Once you're done, it's essential to leave the grout to fully dry because glass cast is sensitive to moisture and if the grout isn't fully dry, then it will react and could spoil the appearance. Finally, sweep or vacuum to remove dust or loose material from the floor. How to work out how much resin you'll need is a really common question, but thankfully we can suss this out with a simple sum. For a penny floor, you'll need two kilograms of glass cast per square meter of floor. Our small demonstration board here is 1.25 by 0.8 meters. Multiply them together and we get one square meter. We just need to multiply the one square meter of floor area by the two kilos of resin per square meter to find that we need two kilograms of resin for this one square meter demonstration. Most floors are a lot larger than this and will often need 10, 20 or more kilos of resin. The success of your glass cast project will all come down to the mixing and pouring procedure. If you're about to do this for real, pay close attention to this section. Glasscast uses a two to one mix ratio by weight. That means you would mix one kilo of resin with 500 grams of hardener. This is not the same as two to one by volume, so use electronic scales, not a measuring jug. To mix the resin, you'll need two buckets. Number them one and two, and make sure they're plenty big enough for the batch sizes you'll be mixing. Thoroughly mixing large batches of resin by hand is very difficult, and so for most floors, you'll need to mix and pour in smaller batches. Doing so also reduces the risk of the resin overheating or curing in the bucket when attempting to mix larger quantities, so stick to a maximum of five kilos per batch. To demonstrate the batch mixing process on our demo board, we'll do two one kilo mixes. Thoroughly mix the resin in bucket one, making especially sure you're scraping the sides, the corners, and the mixing stick itself. After about three minutes, transfer the mix to bucket two. It's really important to just pour, don't scrape the resin from the first bucket. By double potting in this way, we ensure that no unmixed resin from the corners or sides of the container can ever end up on your floor. Mix the resin for another three minutes and then straight away pour your first batch of resin, starting at the furthest point of your floor. You then need to get straight on with your next batch. The procedure for each additional batch you mix is exactly the same. Start with bucket one. Make sure you zero your scales and then weigh out exactly twice as much resin as hardener. Mix thoroughly for three minutes and then pour the mix from bucket one to two. Mix thoroughly again for another three minutes and then immediately pour the new batch onto your floor so that it combines with the resin already on the floor. Depending on the size of your floor, 
you may need to do some spreading out of the earlier batches before you've mixed and poured all of your resin. When you do come to spread the resin, a notch spreader like this works great. Use it to gently steer the resin into the sides and corners. When you first pour the resin, you'll see tiny bubbles in the resin itself from the mixing process, but you shouldn't worry about these at all. Glass cast has a very special formulation, which after only a few minutes will start to react and drive out any air bubbles trapped within it. All that's left to do now is keep the room as dust free as possible whilst the resin cures. How long this takes will vary depending on temperature. The optimum cure temperature for glass cast is 20 degrees C, which should mean that the resin is touch dry in 24 hours and ready for light traffic in about 48 hours. But when your floor looks as good as this, be sure to leave it as long as possible and test a small area for hardness first. Although we focused on pennies in this tutorial, there's a million creative surfaces you could pour glass cast over. This vinyl floor has been made using real dance singles. Or maybe you've got a drawer full of beer bottle tops, which could be turned into a floor or tabletop. And here we've poured glass cast over dry carbon fibre fabric for a real high tech appearance. Whatever project you've got in mind, Glasscast will ensure a stunning, lasting finish for your creative ideas. If you have any questions at all, just get in touch with our helpful team. And if you've not done so already, place your order today and get your project started. Matching floor and wall, it's the latest trend and more popular than ever. And with the new and easy wall system, installing Harrow Laminate floor on the wall is child's play. Please read the installation instructions carefully to avoid problems with the wall installation. You will need fastening rails to ensure perfect interlock. These should be installed at a distance of approximately 50 centimeters. Mark the positions of the rails on the wall. Start with the central rail. Align the rails using a spirit level and mark a drilled hole every 60 to 70 centimeters. Using appropriate wall plugs and screws, secure the rails to the wall. You can level out minor irregularities on the wall using spacers or wooden shims. Start the installation in the left-hand corner. The groove side should be facing upwards. First, cut off the tongue side of the first row of boards. Make sure the board is fitted perfectly horizontally using the spirit level. Underlay the first board using a shim if necessary until you can see from the spirit level that the board is exactly horizontal. Now, simply mark and saw off. This applies for all boards in the first row. Special initial and end clips are supplied for installing the first and last row of boards. Transfer the center point of the rail onto the rear of the board. Screw down the clips on the rear of the boards, making sure not to over tighten. Once the initial and end clips are attached, simply click the first board into the fastening rail. Secure the first board using the fastening clips for laminate floor. Simply twist the clips into the fastening rail and push down onto the groove. 
the board is now secured and seated properly on the groove side. Interlock the next board at the edge joint of the previous board and click into the fastening rail. Make sure that there is a clip on every rail. In case of random installation, you can start the second row with the leftover piece of the first row. Angle in the board in the next row with the tongue in the groove of the previous row of boards. Use the fastening clips again to secure the board and follow the same principle with the remaining boards. When you reach the last row, first cut off the groove side of the board at the desired height to finish off properly. Cut off the actual groove itself as a minimum. As with the first row of boards, you will also need the initial and end clips for the last row of boards. Extend the center of the fastening rail onto adhesive tape in order to transfer the correct position of the clips to the boards. Now, transfer the marking to the rear side of the respective board. Secure the initial and end clips in the same way as with the boards of the first row. Angle in the boards as usual until the clips engage audibly into the fastening rail. Matching aluminium cover mouldings round off the overall impression of your installed surface and conceal the edges. Simply screw the moulding onto the surface using the appropriate screws. Allow yourself to be inspired by the comprehensive Harrow collection and create your own individual living style.